The economist Jeffrey Sachs is the director of the Center for Sustainable Development at Columbia University, a good friend of this program, the author of a book called The Price of Civilization. Jeffrey Sachs is with me now. It is a classic dilemma in the true sense of the word. Do you cut your nose off and uh, stop your oil and gas, or do you have to continue buying Russian oil and gas because otherwise the economic effects will be worse at home. Which do you do, Jeffrey Sachs? Well, let's uh, start at the beginning. These sanctions are not really going to change the course of events in the war. They're not going to change the regime in Russia. They're not going to stop uh, the war machine. Uh, they're really not even going to be enforced in large parts of the world. So the fact of the matter is they're not really much of an answer to anything. And they do a lot of damage to uh, the economies that are imposing the sanctions. And even more than that, they're doing a lot of damage to economies all over the world that say we're not part of this war, and yet we are suffering the consequences of higher food and energy and fertilizer and other prices. So. My view is that uh, as much as we hear in the Western capitals, well, there's unity and uh, look at how much we're doing to hurt Russia, I, I'm a skeptic. Uh, I just don't think that they are changing much of anything except creating a lot of pain in a situation that was already painful because of COVID and right. in a context that was already inflationary because of a more fundamental underlying a set of decisions of the major central banks over in, a period of many years. In your recent article last month, so obviously circumstances have changed and you may have changed your view to an extent, you said it's crucial for Ukraine and NATO to formulate cogent, prudent, reasonable peace terms now. And as I read them, it's all to do with the idea that basically a lot of the gains would have to be a Crimea, for example, de facto, not de jure. Uh, a lot of the gains would have to be ceded the East to Russia. How do you do this without rewarding the aggression? Look, if Russia, uh, Ukraine is going to be destroyed in the coming weeks unless a deal is reached. Uh, and so the first point is the, the loss of lives and the destruction that could happen within the next few weeks and that has already happened is so huge, peace must be the central aim. And nothing that we are doing right now, none of the threats, the sanctions and so forth are gonna stop the mass destruction, but peace talks yeah. could. And right. the, the core of this issue, Richard, has been, in my opinion, from the beginning, the uh, NATO enlargement into Ukraine, the U.S. desire to have Ukraine on our side, as it were, uh, has been so provocative that we should have negotiated a long time ago on some very okay. basic points. But and Jeffrey, and let, I hope let, that we do now before there's complete destruction of this right, country. Let me jump in there then on this idea. Finland said today that they hope to make a decision on NATO membership. Now, bearing in mind Finland's you know, well and truly in the Western camp, member of the EU, et cetera, et cetera, would you, but, but the same argument applies. You take it with Finland, you take NATO's border closer to Russia. Would you be in favor of Finland joining NATO? I think it would be so reckless and provocative at this moment, rather than having some prudence and pushing on the diplomatic line to get Russia out of Ukraine and to agree that NATO is not going to enlarge into Ukraine. You know, halfway around the world in a tiny little island in the Pacific, uh, in the Solomon Islands, the Solomon Islands uh, has drafted a security pact with China. It's a tiny island. And yet the United States is going out of its mind, sending senior national security officials to the Pacific. How dare you sign this thing? The threat that this poses. You know, this is how America feels about a small right. island signing a security pact with China. But then when it comes to the United States pushing into Ukraine in NATO, we say, 
Well, why is Russia concerned about that at all? And what we're doing by this is not finding the path to peace to get Russia out of Ukraine. And so we say we're defending Ukraine, but actually Ukraine is being destroyed in this process in the name of something that isn't defending the country at all and isn't solving any problems and is creating an increasingly severe global economic crisis. Jeffrey Sachs. That's the problem. Jeffrey Sachs. Well, Jeffrey, we'll talk more, uh, hopefully uh, sooner rather than later. Thank you, sir.